Hey friends and welcome back to Sewing From Scratch. I am Kate and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way. Today is our final video in the bra sewing series. Crazy, craziness that this is happening already. Feels like it just flew by. If you missed all the previous videos, I will have the playlist linked below in the description box that you can check out there. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss out on any future videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button so I show up on your feed and you don't miss anything. So we're gonna go through the tutorial of the Ruby bra, step by step, how to do the Ruby bra pattern from Pinup Girls. I've already talked about the materials, all these things. The only thing I didn't talk about, I think, is how to find your measurement. So your BCD is what you're going to use for this um, pattern. And to find your BCD measurement, that is your bottom cup depth. So you measure from the root of your breast, like where your breast meets your body, you wanna measure from that crease up the curvature to your apex or your nipple, and then that measurement in inches is your BCD, your corresponding BCD, and then you go from there. Best if you can do this if you, while you're naked. Uh, if not, then a supportive but not overly padded bra, I think is best. Um, I am going to talk more about my experience with the BCD at the end of this video, so maybe watch this whole thing first before you actually start sewing if you're new to BCD, and then um, and then you can go back and play it while you sew to, you know, figure out how to sew the bra. <laughs> but without further ado, let's just jump into the tutorial, and then I will go through, show you the bras that I made, and kind of talk about it all together. Okay, so a couple things I wanted to mention when I'm cutting these bra pieces out of the lace. So the lace isn't, well, let's start with the way that I folded it. You'll see I folded on these two edges, not necessary. I was just trying to see how much I would have left. You could easily do this by folding one side over as much as you can to fit all the pieces on. I am playing some serious pattern Tetris because I wanna have some lace left to put on my bridge piece. I do not have enough to do the whole bridge, obviously, so, or um, frame, I guess it's called. So I'm just gonna try and keep some pieces and maybe like run some along the bottom or something like that. So I've just been strategically placing these on here until I get the best kind of layout. I am not worried about the stretch direction for these pieces on the lace simply because this is the overlay. So the actual cup, the lining is going to be made with sheer cup lining, which is stable. So that is what we want to worry about when we're doing our cups. We want a stable cup. If you are using something that does have a bit of stretch to it, make sure the stretch is going across the cup. And one more thing is this. So you're going to see here, Normally I would just cut this out, but along the top edge of the cup, I would love to have these scallops. So what I'm going to do is actually just keep these on here. Obviously, if I line this up nicely on the top of the cup, then I have this strap attachment piece that doesn't have any fabric. So I'm going to experiment with leaving it like that, and then the sheer cup lining piece I will do properly, and this will kind of just float above. I'm, I'm hoping that works out. Uh, if it doesn't, I can always go in and, and trim it back and then I would have to finish that top edge with something. I think that is all I have to talk about about the lace. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Again, be very precise with your cutting. You guys saw that. Oh, oh that's upsetting. Oh, that's so upsetting. Um, well, I guess I will be finishing off that top edge. Dang! Don't do my mistakes. Pay attention to what you're doing. So in this kit, I obviously don't have enough to do, like, to make any mistakes. I mean, I could maybe fit a little pattern piece in here if need be, but... It's also important to mark our notches. There is a right and a wrong side to this lace, so make sure you are mirroring. If your fabric also has a right and wrong side. All right, time to sew the cups together. So we are going to lay out our cup pieces. 
can remind ourselves with our pattern pieces. Outer, lower cup, middle, lower cup. So we need to match notches and so this is my outer lower cup. We're working with the right side of the lace up. So then I need one of these pieces. Again, just make sure that you have it the right way. Okay, and then you're going to repeat the thing, the same thing with the other side. So make sure that they'll be mirrored. And now we can start stitching. So I'm going to stitch the lower cup, three lower cut pieces together first. So we're using a quarter inch seam allowance like this. So we will turn this right sides together and stitch that along and then do the same with this. The instructions are gonna tell you to open it up, press the seams open and top stitch them. I don't, I'm not gonna do that on the lace because that just sounds not easy. I might do it with the sheer cup lining but we will see when we get to that. So I'm going to do those three pieces and then I will come back and show you how we match up this. And remember we are doing a one quarter inch seam allowance and you want to be very precise on this. So here is my cup bottom. I have finished this one. We'll get to that in a minute. But a couple things I learned about sewing the lace. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting but there were some things to mention. So when you're starting your seam, the lace is going to want to suck in, which is, I kind of expected that. So you can either start a little bit away from the edge and then back stitch, but you're still going to get some of that. What I like to do and what I found was best was hold the threads at the back of the machine. So the top thread and the bobbin thread that come out of the machine, hold them back here, let your needle go in, and pull these threads as you're feeding this through very slowly and then it'll get going. You can also like put paper under there or use a hump jumper or something like that but this is what I found to be the best. The other thing that I didn't really mention when we had just the cup pieces but I can show you with the pattern pieces. When you're matching these up if you're not used to easing in and things like that what you want to do is so we can see that these two pieces don't fit together nicely right so when we have them right sides together we're matching up the notches first then you can match up the edge and what you're going to see here is this is sticking out past that is what we want let that stick out it's going to stick out probably a quarter inch which is what our seam allowance is and then same with on the bottom that is to account for your seam allowance because when now that it's done you have this nice even line here whereas if it was even here you can see that it cuts up here so if you take your seam allowance to here you're going to have this giant cutout of your seam stitch line so that's how that ended up and then I wasn't going to top stitch I had mentioned that but I ended up top stitching because it just looked better and it looked a little more finished. I pushed everything to the outside and then top stitched on the bottom cup. So these two seams are pressed to the outside. When I do the sheer cup lining, I will make sure that it's opposite so that they're going opposites. I, um, I kind of wish I would have opened them up. I think it would have maybe looked just a little bit better. Like there wouldn't have been as much density along the seams. It would have been wider but not as dense if that makes sense and then when I went and added on the top I wasn't sure which way to go but I ended up pushing the seam up towards the top cup and then stitching it down there just with like an eighth inch seam allowance and you can trim away anything that you think is is flapping around after so now it's time to attach the top portion of the cup so remember we have these notches here we are going to line those up with the stitch lines on our bottom cup. And make sure you are lining up with the stitch line, not with the edge of your seam allowance. So we're going to line those up, clip it in place on both of them. Now we have the edges to deal with. So now when we get to the edges, we're going to line it up. But again, take that same principle we just talked about and leave a little bit hanging over so that you have that seam allowance there for when it's stitched together so that you do get a nice even edge along. 
So now we'll just stitch that and then I will, pre I will push it, the seam allowance up and top stitch it down. So my two fabric cups are now done. Now we're going to just repeat the whole thing with the sheer cup lining. So I'm going to cut them out the same and make them all the same. The only thing that I don't know what I'm going to do yet is the which way I'm going to push the seam allowance to lay with the cup. So I will have to make up the cup and then and then kind of decide that way because remember we want the sheer cup lining the seam allowance to be to the inside so we want them both on the inside so that on the outside we have this nice lace no seam allowances and then on the inside the sheer cup lining cup will be here nice finished all the in seam allowances are in the inside so i will go ahead and do that All right, cups are done. So the sheer cup lining, I did end up pushing the seam allowances the opposite way as the top cups. I don't know, I don't really know which way would be best. Like I don't, we won't know till it's done, I guess how it looks exactly. After I made the, the fabric cups or the lace cups, I remembered I think there's a way that you can make these all together and hide all the seams inside so you would like sandwich things to make all the seam allowances inside and then this is all one piece instead of two separate pieces. I think there's a hack like that on, um, or not a hack I guess, but like a trick to it on Liz Sews. So if I can remember that and it is what I'm thinking of, I will link that down below. Oh, the sheer cup lining was easy to work with. Nothing to really worry about there. Now that they are kind of this together, uh, we have you know the outside no seam allowances showing and the inside no seam allowances showing. So now when we go to put them in our cups, we'll just treat this bottom edge as, well, we'll pretty much treat it all as one cup now. So you could baste around if you were worried about it slipping around or not being able to get them you know lined up properly I'm as of right now I'm not gonna do that but that could change down the line still not sure how I'm gonna finish off this top edge we will need to do that soon ish so I've been thinking about maybe trying to use the lace somehow to encapsulate it or uh, or I might just go with fold over elastic or another thing I have thought of which will lose seam allowance is if I were to like put these the opposite way so right sides together stitch it and then fold it back out and then it would be kind of tucked in I don't know if I like that look and I also don't know about changing the seam allowance on here just because I think we, I need that coverage so I, th I think ultimately I will try and use this I was hoping to use some of it for the bottom band but uh, this is a little bit more important because I think this is the top edge trim that it sent that came in the kit I have so I mean you would I guess you would still lose seam allowance wouldn't you even if I added the lace on hmm that does look kind of nice oh boy now I really don't know <laughs> we'll see we'll see what we end up doing but we're not gonna worry about that right now because we are going to work on the frame, and for the frame, we are using duoplex. So, if you watch the fit video, you know that <laughs> I I did try to like narrow the center gore, and then I think I have to unfold it and just leave it as is. So I'm making no adjustments to this. Actually, I'm making no adjustments to any of this bra pattern, which is quite unique for me for sewing. I usually adjust. At least one thing in something that I'm making. So we do have a ton of this duoplex if you if in this quartet from Bra Maker Supply. So I have enough to do several bras. I am actually thinking I will make a second bra in this color scheme kind of thing with um, with the duoplex cups, and then also have. Um, whatever it'll be kind of pieced together with the findings. I haven't decided if I'm going to use the matte or shiny side but we can go ahead and cut this out and this is kind of it's not straight so it's on a bit of an angle so I will make sure I have enough. So we are cutting on the fold and this stuff is pretty slippy so if you do want to 
open it, you know, retrace this, make it one big piece, and then not cut on the fold, that is, uh, that's a good idea. I'm not going to do that, but it is a good idea, and I might regret not doing it. I still have loads of this left, so obviously you can make several frames, uh, and several cups. So that's the nice thing about buying a kit too, is you do get a little bit extra on some things. Obviously the lace not, but that's all right. Okay, so now I need to decide, am I doing the, oh, and I forgot to mark notches. So let's just do that right now. Okay, done with the frame piece. And yeah, now I need to decide matte or shiny. So the shiny side is what I did on that blue bra. And I I don't know, honestly, I don't know if I love it. I think I might go with the matte side because this is kind of, has some sheen to it, but also not a ton. I don't know, you guys, I mean, obviously the bra is gonna be done, but comment below which I should choose, which you would choose, the shiny or the matte. So that would be the matte, and then the shiny would look like that. Hmm, maybe I do like the shiny. And then this is the power net, so we have that to consider too. Guys, I actually, I thought I was going to go with the matte, but I think I like the shiny. I think I'm going shiny. Okay, I'm going shiny. It's decided. So now that I decided that, I know which way to add my back bands on. And we cut that out of power net. Again, we have a ton of this. I think I can probably get four bras out of this. Those are cut out. Here's my frame. Doing shiny side. So we're gonna go shiny side up, right side up. And I take my power net pieces, which does have a right side. I think you could probably do, obviously you could do either way, but I'm gonna go with the more netty side on the top. So we line those up. And again, remember, we do want that overhang so that our seams are, it's a nice even line. So we're gonna stitch that side down. So we're gonna stitch that down, then we fold it open and we top stitch the seam allowance on the side of the frame. Okay, so I have these done. So you can see this one lines up nicely there on the top and on the bottom, top stitching done. But I did misalign this one. So I already trimmed this off, but you can see at the top it's not lined up properly. That's because I didn't have it sticking past enough for my seam allowance, this part. So that's what happens if you don't leave that seam allowance bit there because there wasn't, you know, my elastic can, can kind of make up for that. I did just trim off the bottom. It wasn't bad enough that I wanted to unpick it and redo it. It is a good idea to do that if you are going to before you top stitch. So, oh, I also wanted to mention the back band and the hook and eye. The ruby bra pattern has two different size kind of categories so the smaller size you, sizes up to four and a half BCD uses the two row hook and eye and then 4.75 and up uses the three row hook and eye so if you're smaller than a 4.75 you can absolutely use a three row hook and eye we would just have to draft this to be larger and I think we talked about that in our t uh, fit test video if not, it's a simple adjustment that you would do to your pattern piece before you cut. So you would just place this on here, decide how much more you need to add, and then add a little tiny wedge there. So it's nice that I don't have to make that adjustment as well. You could, you're like, it doesn't line up. But we do still have to add our elastic on the bottom, which will take up quite a bit, especially because I have wider elastic than the pattern calls for. Okay, so back to the bridge. So we need to take this centerpiece and fold it under one quarter inch and stitch it down. I recommend measuring this. I have this handy, so I'm gonna use that. And just overlay that one, in, one quarter inch and I can mark it. 
So now I don't have a sharp chalk, so I'm actually just gonna go an eighth, but my mark should be now a quarter inch. So I'm gonna fold right on that. And then we'll just stitch that down. Okay, so now it's time to finish off these cups. And the instructions are gonna tell you to uh, to stabilize the underarm and the top neckline edge with some stabilizer tape, which actually came in this quartet kit. So this is stabilizer tape. I'm not going to do that because this is sheer cup lining and it is stable. So if you want to, if you're just using some other fabric, whatever, go ahead and do that there and there as per the instructions. I'm not going to do that, but I do need to decide how I'm finishing off this top edge. So my options would be fold over elastic, um, this trim that came in the quartet that um, would take seam allowance away. It's an elastic trim. This pattern is drafted for this to be fold over elastic, which does not take away seam allowance. So I am kind of nervous about about taking some seam allowance away. So fold over elastic would be the best option, but I, ooh, I really do want to try this. Um, and I don't, I don't think I have black fold over. I'd have to check that. Another option would be to use this. And like I said, this is important. We need, do need to have this finished off but does it need to have the scallops? I don't know, maybe I should save this for the bottom of the frame. Cause I don't, ha I wouldn't have enough to do both, I don't think. So these are the colors of fold over I have. Obviously nothing that's really cohesive. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to use this. Cause I think I have, I think I would have enough to do two bras with this. Let me just see. Oh yeah, yeah, I have enough to do two rows with this. So, um, and I think I'm gonna sandwich it in between the two. Now I do have other trims, but the idea is that it be elastic and that it matches kind of thing. So I'm going to put these right sides together. So that means there and there. I'm gonna stitch them. So I'm gonna have them right sides together and I'm gonna have this sandwiched in between. Yeah, I think this is the best way to hide everything. So, I'm going to just leave a little bit here. Clip this. I, I'm gonna stretch it a little bit, but I'm very leery of stretching it too much. Okay, and then I'm gonna add this on top. But you know, this will stick out the same as the seam allowance. So I'm gonna stitch as close as I can to those little uh, picos. We'll see how this works. Okay, I, I'm happy with this. And I realized, like, I think I mentioned it, but I'm taking away seam allowance, about a quarter inch, not quite. But then I'm adding this back. So that kind of acts as our fabric. So it should still be the same when we you know, it should give the same effect. So pretty happy with how that turned out. I did change my, I stitched this on with the burgundy thread, but then I switched to yellow for the, and I top stitched this down, but I should have left the, I think I should have left the burgundy in for the back. I don't know, I don't know. It doesn't look too bad, the stitching. I guess you can't even see it on there. So. The cups are good to uh, put into the frame now, I believe. And I was just thinking about it, and I should have incorporated lace into here, into this, uh, into this seam here. I think that would have looked nice and just added that little cohesive touch. Like I could have done, um, you know, a strip just like that in there. That would have been really pretty. So now I'm thinking of doing a strip in here just to kind of make it just like to tie it back into the cups because I feel like right now the cups are just like BAM <laughs> you know they just like don't go so I think if I add something I guess I could have even done well I don't have enough but you could even uh, have an overlay of stretch lace here the entire piece 
but I think I'll just do maybe like that. If I have enough to do both sides, I think I should. Thinking that's what I'll do. I also thought about running it along the whole length of the bottom, but I don't think I would have enough to do that. It would be really pretty though. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I top stitched this with a zigzag so it can still stretch a bit if need be. So now we're gonna attach the cups into the frame and we're gonna use a straight stitch at quarter inch seam allowance. So we have our notches here, that's to match up seam lines. So we're going to take these again, match up the seam, the stitch line, not the seam allowance. So these should be, because I did mine offset, offset there, and I am going to clip that there. You can use pins if you don't have clips or if you prefer pins. And then I will do this one very close together. And then this one comes and swings around here. And when we get to the end, it should match up nicely. And then that'll just like continue up. I think you can see, yeah, on here, you can see that it's just like, it terminates into the top of that bridge where we folded it down a quarter inch. So that is the goal. And of course then on this side we, we do the same thing, it won't stick out or anything. It will match up nicely. You might have to stick it out a little bit for seam allowance, but I mean, it'll make a nice curve. Okay, so I'm gonna do that with both cups, so clip them in there, and then stitch along there with a quarter inch straight stitch. Okay, so that turned out pretty good. Um, I would've liked the elastics here to be a little bit lower, but that's all right. I think that's just because this is bigger than the, you know what we took off there. It's not worth redoing, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I did have a little bit of issue there. I had to seam rip and, and fix. I forgot to change my thread back to burgundy, so I have the yellow there, but that's okay because this actually gets pushed down and then covered up, so we don't have to worry about that seam allowance. I will switch back to burgundy, though soon so yeah we can see it's coming together as a bra you could even hold it up to your body at this point see how it's going to look and fit I think we're ready to add the bottom band elastic now if you ordered the kit the large findings kit from bra maker supply you would have got a three-quarter inch elastic like I did instead of a half inch so we're actually it's like a quarter inch bigger than what the pattern suggests which I think is okay. I think we still have room. Uh, let's see, how do we attach this like this? And then it gets flipped under like that. And then I think, oh shoot, no we don't. We don't, we don't, we don't. So, okay, I don't really wanna trim this. Mind you, if I finish it off with a satin stitch, that would work. So that's an option. Or I could just have more of the pico sticking out. I think that should work. So I'm going to overhang this quarter inch. I could go along here and mark in a quarter inch all the way along my elastic, but I'm just going to use the guides on my sewing machine. If you have the right elastic, you don't have to really worry about that. So what we do is we lay this with the fuzzy side up. And normally, if you have the right size elastic, you would just line up the bottoms. Again, I'm gonna just overhang mine by a quarter inch. Okay, editing Caitlin here. What I should have done is aligned this at the same place that I sh normally would, so along that raw edge, and then just only sewn at a half inch seam allowance instead of taking the entire width of the elastic. That would have then allowed me to just have more elastic sticking out, which wouldn't have looked as pretty, but it would have saved a lot of headache that you're gonna see soon here. And then we're going to stitch this down with a zigzag stitch. Just leave a little bit of overhang here. I guess I should have you in. And then um, we're gonna just like stretch slightly. So like not a lot, but just like, just a little bit. And we're gonna stitch this along with a zigzag, about two and a half inch width and two inch length. And we wanna get close, very close to this pico edge. So then when we, it says in the instructions, when we get to this center, see how it like goes up? We're gonna just clip about a quarter inch or so into this apex or I don't know what you would call this. And then 
just in the fabric, not the elastic, and then don't stretch the elastic through here and that should allow it to, to sit nicely. All right, so then once we have that done, we will flip it to the inside and we will top stitch with a triple zigzag stitch. We wanna make sure at that point that we are not sewing over this, the seam here. All right, I have the elastic attached, but you know what, it is just, I, don't, I, I knew this in my head, but I, whatever. When I fold it up, it does go into the cup, which isn't, it's not okay. It's like it's barely, but it does. So I am gonna have to trim this off a quarter inch. I'm not gonna go back and uh, like rip this off and deal with it. I'm just going to trim it off because it's too bulky to fold down with the with that seam allowance. So I'm gonna trim it off a quarter inch and I'll do a satin stitch on the edge. I could serge it, but I think I'll just do a satin stitch because it'll be a nicer finish. All right, then I will flip it up and do a triple stick zigzag. Update, if you have too big of elastic, just extend the bottom of this by that size, the amount that it's bigger because it's kind of a nightmare to deal with. So in hindsight, I should have extended this a quarter inch, like my pattern pieces of the back band and the frame by a quarter inch. And then I would have had to adjust this by a quarter inch to allow for my hook and eye. Um, but I didn't, so I did trim this, um, and then I did a satin stitch, doesn't look the best, but it's really only an issue here at the bottom of the cup. So I mean, I guess I could have just trimmed out that portion that's going to be in the seam allowance, um, but I didn't, so I did the whole thing. And then when you're top stitching it down, you need to be careful you're not getting into this cup seam, but also that you're not catching the seam allowance, which I actually did on both cups by accident. So I had to go back in, stitch rip out that triple zigzag, and then I, tr I ended up trimming away more of the elastic around there too. So now the seam allowance where our, our under wire channeling is gonna go can fold down nicely and it doesn't, uh, it, it's not held up on that band elastic. So now we're gonna do kind of the same thing with the underarm. So we're going to take our underarm elastic. This is 3 8 Mine actually is the right size this time. And again, lay it right sides together. So the fuzzy side should be up. And we're gonna go all along the underarm here. With, do the same zigzag, like the single zigzag, pulling the elastic slightly. Then we're gonna turn it over and do the three step zigzag there. So again, this way we're gonna try and get close to those picots so that only a little bit sticks out, just like here. Okay, underarm elastics are done. I did not top stitch around the cup because I'm gonna change the thread, but I'll wait till we do the strap to do that. So that's kind of nice. Now I think we do the casing. I'm going to clip the casing where, um, I don't know if you can see, so the underarm elastic is here. This is our, our seam allowance from our cup to our frame. We're gonna clip that because that's where our channeling is gonna go. And make sure you're clipping just the seam allowance and not through the stitch line. Make sure that it can now like move freely because it needs to go down. We'll do that on both sides. Okay. Now we're going to lay it this way. We're gonna, now we are going to fold the band and the frame under the cup to expose the seam. Okay, so we want just the seam allowance like so. We're going to use a straight stitch, about two and a half to three millimeters, and we're going to overhang it a bit. So if you didn't clip enough, go back in and make sure you can get that. Okay, and we want to be on this side. So we want to sew first on the cup side. So we're gonna leave a little bit hanging over on each end. So we're just gonna align it right on the, right on that stitch line there. We do not wanna go past that stitch line. So we will do that and we'll stitch right along the edge. 
Then we can open it up. We'll fold this all down and we will top stitch along the other edge. Okay, I thought I would bring you in here and show you kind of what's going on. So I just am sewing on the seam allowance. I'm on the bra side and I have my soft side that I want to my skin up. So, I'm not pinning anything. I'm just feeding it through very slowly. So I'm feeding this through. I'm laying this on top, right? Oh, can you see? Yeah, you can kind of see. The seam lap, see it, stitch line. So I'm laying it right pretty much on top of there. I have my needle position moved over so that I'm catching the edge of this and then I'm stitching. So if this is right on the edge, right on my, this line and I'm stitching on this edge or just a little bit in, I know I won't go over that stitch line. Okay, so my underwire channeling is attached. Now this is probably the trickiest bit is getting that attached and, and um, you know, on the seam line and things like that. Okay, so now we are only stitching through the channeling and, and the seam allowance. And we are going to bar tack the end, the center end of the channeling. If you don't have a bar tack stitch on your machine, just use a, a zigzag, a tight zigzag. We're gonna go just under the center here. So do your bar tack across, and then we're gonna trim it a little bit lower. You don't wanna see this from like, so probably trim it to like where your stitching is, I guess, or however low you can get, that looks nice, um, and have a bar tack there. So we're gonna do that on both. If they overlap, like it looks like mine will, um, that's fine. It's fine for them to overlap. So yeah, we will do two bar tacks again. We're just doing them like this, so you won't be able to see them from the outside of the bra, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna do those two bar tacks, and then we can fold this down, and we'll top edge stitch along the outer edge now. And we wanna make sure that we are like making this nice and smooth all along so that we don't get puckering or anything like that. And we're gonna leave this like this for now. And we wanna really wanna make sure we are getting on the edge so that our channel or our um, underwire can fit through. So we're gonna do the, so again, we will do these two bar tacks, then we will fold this down, edge stitch along here, and that's really the hardest parts. Then we'll do the straps and the back band and we're done. Okay, so my channeling is done and I'm just trying to decide how to incorporate this lace. So I'm thinking either like this, either on an angle or just, uh, just straight up and down. So then I would have lace like that and then I still have my hook and eye there. So I mean, it's... It's still kind of choppy, I guess. I also thought about putting the lace this way to kind of make like a V in the back. Again, still would have the hook and eye. Then separating that, which I, I do like this better than the up and down. I think that's probably what I'll go with. But I, if you're in the same predicament, I really wish I would have remembered to put it into this seam here. I think that would have looked the nicest coming off of the um, off of the frame and peeking out onto the band. I think that really would have looked the nicest like that. But that's okay. I'm going to end up going, I think I'm going to go with the the kind of V shape. So I'll just lay this over top of everything. And the idea, I guess I'll just have to I'll just have to do that. Shoot, that should have been in the ba band. Or I could just leave this. Or I could also just do like a little bit peeking out here when I attach that. But then it still has that. <sighs> Shoot, I'm kind of mad now. Uh, you're gonna have to leave me a comment on this too. What do you guys think I should do at this point? Obviously this would have been the best option. That is kind of cute, but I don't know. I think I'm going to go with this. So I'm going to lay this over. Um, how am I going to do this? Do this. Do this. So I guess I can do one side right sides together. And then either the top or the bottom, whichever one. 
I will have to top stitch. I think I'll do the bottom right sides together because um, that gets seen more than the top will. Although I probably will still end up top stitching it. So now I just kind of have to get the angle right. How do I want this? And replicate it as well. Okay. I will do that. I'm going to top stitch this down, or uh, stitch this down, and then I'll be able to fold it up and uh, trim away. Oh wow, maybe I should actually get the right angle going on here. <sighs> yes, I might as well just fold it all under anyway because that's going to be the way to get the easiest way to get this right. So I think I'm going to go off of this line here just so then I can easily make them symmetrical. I'm only worrying about the top and bottom right now because this is going to get strapped, this is going to get hook and eye and then this I'm going to leave floating. Okay so now I'm just going to edge stitch up here and down here. I th think I should probably use a zigzag stitch. Okay pretty pleased with how that looks. I do still need to trim in here, which I will do off camera, um, but we can go ahead and make our straps now. So this is how the other side looks. I think that's, I think it needed that. Like it just needed to be more cohesive all over. So now for straps, <laughs> again, I have to modify here because Quartet from Bra Maker Supply only comes with two loops. And the ruby bra strap actually pattern requires uh, four, so two for each strap. So I'm gonna make the back, you know, normal. And then, I mean, I could go and research like a way to make the strap with only one. You know, you could, that you'd use more elastic, I guess. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to attach, instead of having this ring here at the cup, I'm going to just have my cup. And then when we do the front, Oh, I forgot to do that. I'll have to do that. Front strap, I will just um, put them right sides together, sew them together, and then it'll just finish like that, kind of how my ready-to-wear bras are anyway. Um, and then I'll have to like top stitch down that seam allowance just because I don't want that showing. Strap time, friends. So, uh, okay, where to set? So the length I was given in this kit was 42 inches. So, and the pattern says 10 to 12 inches for each piece. So what I did was I took the whole length, so 42 inches, cut it in half and then half again. So I quartered it and I was left with obviously four 10 and a half inch pieces. I've sewn the front ones on already. So what, because I already mentioned that I don't have a ring for there, well, I'm not willing to use other rings because I want these gold ones. I just attached this here, right sides together, flipped it over, and then top stitched it. The disadvantage with this is that it can't now move or swivel on this cup, so it's like a fixed angle on there. Um, so we'll see when I put it on how that turns out. This side turned out really, really nice. This side, I my elastics were too wide so um, like my my trim elastics so there's like about a quarter inch here where it juts over which I'm not going to worry about but uh, it is something I could have fixed so that's how I did the front elastic now the back we are going to take a 10 or like our one of our pieces we're going to take the slider this piece is right side up I'm putting it up through the slider like that and then back down and then I'm going to sew it back on itself to encapsulate that. So I'm going to leave about three quarters of an inch here because that's what it ends up being and then I'm going to go and stitch that down. So I have that stitch down there. I just used a straight stitch but I did go back and forth over it several times. So now we are going to take this the other end of this, we're going to flip this over so it's wrong side up. We are going to take our other ring, pop that on there. I think this is three quarter inch uh, strap elastic that I'm using here. And then it comes up through the side of the slider. 
that the strap is, so it's up like that. So I have my ring here. It's come through this, through the ring, up through this side. And now I'm going to put it down through this side. Okay, this is always super confusing for me, so I always have to like look at other stuff to see how it goes. So that's how that is now. This is the top of our strap. This will connect to the front strap that we that I already showed you, and this is going to connect to the bra. So we're going to move this all to the end so we can have more to work with here. Bring in the bra. Uh, we are going to lay this on top. So the key here is to make sure you are getting all of this covered here. So like if you just lined it up here, you would be missing some, which your hook and eye probably would cover. So I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I'm just gonna make sure that I'm covering all of that. I can pin it on, clip it on. And now we're going to stitch it down. Now the stitching is a little bit uh, different than anything you've probably done before. I have used straight stitch in the past, like on that first bra that I made, and it popped. So I'm not going to be doing straight stitch. I am going to be doing the zigzag. We are going to zigzag up this outer, well, I guess it's the inner, inner towards the actual bra cups, from the bottom up to the top, going over, and then down the center. So in the end, it'll look... Well, you can't see because of the stitching. Well, you can kind of see the stitching. So I've come up here, across, and then down the center. And then once that's stitched, we can then pull this back and we're going to trim away the fabric that's under there. And then it's just the hook and eye and the bow. Woo -woo. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that quick. All right, so I've stitched it now, but I left this so I can show you. So I'm gonna pull this back and trim it off. Be very careful that you're not snipping stitching or some like the elastic or anything you're not supposed to be, just this excess seam allowance. If you have a pair of duckbill applique scissors, this would be the perfect situation to use them. I have yet to splurge on one pair for myself or receive them as a gift, even though I've been hinting or not even hinting, giving links <laughs> for a couple years now. But one day, one day I will have some duckbill applique scissors. So there's that. Now I'm just gonna trim this off a little bit for my hook and eye, because that's the next step. I just wanna make sure I'm not taking too much at this point. Okay. Oh, we, we didn't finish the strap. So now you can take your front strap and you can loop it through the ring here and then stitch it down onto itself. And now we can do the hook and eye. Where do I put that? There. The hooks are on the left side when worn, which is this way. Okay, so my hooks are going to go here and we want them um, right side up, so like that. So what you do is you open this up, open this up, our bow will go on after, slide this in here, and we will keep this up when we're sewing because we don't want it to get caught in the feed dogs or anything like that. So we have that in there, we're just gonna stitch it down, and then on this side, we do the eye, or the hooks, that was the eyes, these are the hooks, sorry if I confused anyone. And we open it up as well and just, oh, I'm gonna need to trim that. Just slide her in. This time the hooks are going down and we wanna make sure when we sew them though that we flip this over. Everybody's in there. They do leave these slots to kinda have your top and bottom angle out. Okay, there, so we want, yeah, we wanna make sure this is like that, we're gonna sew our rectangle, but we're gonna sew it from this side. And it can help to use a zipper foot uh, to get close to those hooks. And then this side, yeah, we'll do our rectangle there. And then, when that's done, we can stick our bow on. So you can do this by hand or with your machine. Just gonna stick it on wherever it looks good. Stitch her down. So then we'll stick in our wires 
colored side goes to the center and we will finish this off um, on top of the elastic here. We'll just use a bar tack and that'll go through all layers. And that's it. And you know, next time you see this, it's gonna be the finished product. All right, so this is the bra I was working on. I've worn it, so it's there's a few threads that need to be cut off and trimmed and things like that. <sighs> Love how it turned out. Um, you guys saw, you saw the saga of the lace and how I cut that off and things. Honestly, I'm gonna talk about it more, but I, I really wish I wouldn't have done that on accident. Mainly because this I mean, it fits, I wear it, love it, super, super comfortable. I love, actually, in the end, I love the the width of this back band because it's so supportive and, and comfortable. But this is just, again, it just isn't fitting me and I'm having the same problems no matter what size I try. So I'm gonna talk about that again in a bit, but let's just go through and check out this bra and I'll just show you the finished product and kind of go through all the bits and pieces and um, you can see it now like in real life finished up. Okay, so here is the lace bra. Um, it's pretty good, like again, overall happy with it. So I did the cup out of this lace, I think it was called banana, and then it has the sheer cup lining inside. I did the two cups separately, put them wrong sides together so all the seams are hidden. You'll see that when we flip it over. I did end up top stitching this. You already saw that, of course. And then the frame again, we did in duoplex. Um, the back band is in micro mesh or power net, I think it's called. And then I did this, I added this lace here, which I am so, so happy I did. I feel like it really adds this level of cohesion across the bra. So I think it's really pretty. And it's been a long time since I've had like a, a non-foam cup bra and I am just so, so happy. I am, I, if I never wear another foam cup bra again, I would not be upset. So there's how she looks. I don't know if there's much to say. Oh yeah, I added the bow on. I think we talked about that. The straps. I did not add the stabilizer. I didn't have two rings, so I just attached it here, which is okay. I don't, it doesn't bother me at all. This one got a little bit, uh, I guess, too wide. So my strap doesn't look as nice as this one over here. This is the inside now, so let's start on this one side. The elastic, you'll remember, I cut it down and then I like did a satin stitch over it and it turned out okay. I'm gonna show you another option soon here, but it, it turned out okay. It's uh, very, very close to the edge here. Like the picos are just sticking out past that underwire casing. Everything turned out nice. Here's the inside of the cup, so you, you, really, you don't see any open seams. You can see the top stitching on here, but it's, it's not noticeable really in the end. I think I could stand to shorten these straps, especially if I don't stabilize it. So next time I think I would, would shorten them. I think these are 11 inch or 10 and a half and I would go maybe like nine or 10 because I have this as small as it can go. Uh, the, I think that's about all I have to say on that. I am happy with how the elastic finished sandwiched in there. This is all nice in here. I think that's it. I think that's all that is to say about this one. So that was that bra. Again, that was the 4.75 BCD. And like I said, it just, it wasn't fitting great in the upper cup. I was still having a little bit of spill over. Everywhere else fit great other than the band was a little big. I think I would size down to a 30 the next time. So for that fact, I wanted to make another one. And of course, I have so much bra materials left over from the two bra kits that I have bought. So I was able to make a second or a third, I guess, in the end, but second bra from this kit, so it's all burgundy, so I did duoplex everywhere except for the back band is the mesh. I had enough to do that, and I still have a lot left. The only thing I didn't have enough of in the kit was strapping, because I used all every single centimeter of strapping for that other, the lace bra. Um, I needed to use a different hook and eye, and then the underwire channeling, I only had enough for one cup, so then I had to use some black for the other one, which is totally fine. 
Other than that, I had enough of everything. We will go down and look at this in you know, close up right away here, but I did just want to mention that I'm still having the fit issue with the upper cup. It's still giving me a little bit of spill over, and I mean, it's not bad, but it's still just not right. And I don't know if I just need to make that piece wider and that's good enough, or if the whole cup isn't fitting me right. Like, I honestly just need to, to be with somebody who knows enough about bra fitting, proper sewing bra fitting, to help me out, because I don't think this six, because this is a six now, I don't think this is my size. The straps are too wide, they fall down. I do need to shorten them anyway, but they shouldn't be like falling down off my shoulders just from sitting there. And then I made the 30 band on this one, which is, it fits a lot better. I do find that the hook and eye from Bra Maker Supply are like scratchy on the corners. I don't know if they like, they seal it with something or what, but I need to somehow smooth those out because it pokes me, it's like quite uncomfortable. But overall, I mean, I wear this bra, I'm happy with how it turned out, just not so happy on the fit and the sizing. Anyway, let's go down and check it out. Okay, so then I went ahead and like I said, I made the six BCD. Not crazy about the fit. Again, I think I'm just gonna try and tweak it somehow to make this higher, but not in the six, in the four points, or in the five, this is the five. In the 4.75, I'm just going to try and make the upper cup come up more. I think that will really solve all my problems in the 4.75. So this bra is, I, I'm expecting it to be like more scrappy than it is. I was expecting to use like black, more a lot more black. As it turns out, it just ended up being the straps and then the, the hook and eye that had to be black. So we'll get to that in a minute. Oh, and one of the underwire channelings. But other than that, it's uh, it, it turned out pretty nice. I, I wish I would have color matched the thread. Don't love the brown on there, but I mean, it's okay. It's a look, I guess. So I did the duoplex. I did not have enough of the lace to do really anything. So I did the duoplex for the cup and the frame. I know I said I probably wouldn't do a duoplex cup again, but this, I had no issues with this. It was, I, I enjoy it. It's, um, it's quite fine. I did not stabilize anything again. I don't really see the need in that. I think, yeah, I think that would make things actually worse. So totally fine without that. It's very supportive. It's good. I harvested this bow from an old bra that I had, which I actually had planned to harvest more from. And then once I got into it, all I did was cut this off and the straps and um, the straps I put in my stash for later and the rest of the bra ended up getting thrown out. So yeah, I just did the one layer of duoplex here. The inside of the bra because it's the one layer of duoplex, you can like you can see the seams, and I've talked about this before that I don't love that. I thought about covering them with some twill tape or something like that, but in the end, I just I just didn't. And I mean, it's okay. It's a, it's wearable. I will wear this all the time now that I have these two bras. They will be my everyday bras, and they will be my only everyday bras until you know I decide I want to sew something again. But so I wanted to mention the underband elastic. So in the other one, I trimmed the whole piece of elastic down and then satin stitched the edge. In this one, I just attached it as is, and then I just cut away where where it needed to fold over here for the underwire channeling. And it's a little bit different result. So this one, you, there's like no pico showing, would be the biggest difference. So because you know we sewed further up on the on the frame and then this one has a little bit more so I mean there's a little bit of difference there but quite honestly not a lot and this one is a lot easier to instead of trimming the whole thing and then satin stitching it worked out just fine to do it like that uh, and going forward I would probably just l like l extend the frame by a quarter inch and the back band which I obviously forgot to do here or just, you know, get the right size elastics. But that's about all there is to say about this. The kit, of course, came with enough to do 
uh, enough of the underarm elastic to do two bras plus I have enough I measured it out to do a third bra with the underarm elastic I think I have enough of this pretty pico to do another bra as well or maybe just a little bit maybe it would just be for like underwear I can't remember but there's still some extra of this the underwire channeling was just like a little piece left over still lots of the duoplex and lots of the power net and then I used the hook and eye from that blue bra that I made. I already talked about how it's like pokey, which is needs to be fixed. And then I used this bra strapping from that other bra as well. And this one I did stabilize. So it's interesting to see the differences and that's kind of what I'll be comparing. Still too long, still doesn't need to be this long. And I mentioned already that it's they're too wide on my shoulders, so I definitely have to shorten them because they're just unwearable right now. And then I think the width is manageable. Um, I guess it wouldn't be a big deal to like move this in a little bit on the back, but I think it's more actually the front that needs to come in. So that would be a little bit more involved and I don't really, care to do that so I will probably just shorten the straps and then wear this as is until I feel the need to buy more bra making supplies and make another one so thank you so much for watching this video I hope it I hope it was helpful number one the, the purpose of the video was the the so long uh, and then other than that I hope it was it was like kind of informative as to the fit of the ruby bra without you know showing myself in the bra other than that, I hope it was just kind of like entertaining to see, you know, how it, how it all came up after these seven weeks of videos. And I hope you stick around for the next video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. If you did enjoy this video and this series, please, please, please hit the thumbs up button. It really does help out YouTubers to figure out what our audience likes and give you exactly what you're looking for in terms of content. And it's just nice to see and puts a smile on my face. So thumbs up for every video that you like is, it's something small that you can do, but it really does make a big difference in a YouTuber, especially a small YouTuber's life. So thank you for doing that. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Good luck with your bra sewing. Tag me on Instagram. I want to see everything that you make. Have a great weekend. Bye.